Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to talk about volumes of pyramids and cones. What pyramids and cones have in common is they both come to this characteristic point at the top. And we're going to see that they have similarities in how you find their volumes too. But let's start with pyramids. Pyramids come to a point at the top. They're named for the shapes of their bases. So on the left, I have a triangular pyramid because the bottom of it is a triangle. And on the right, I have a rectangular pyramid because the bottom of it is a rectangle. But regardless of how they're shaped, the volume can be found in the same way. One third the area of the base times the height. Okay, so in this example, we're gonna find the volume of a pyramid that has a rectangular base. The dimensions of the base are six centimeters by three centimeters, and the height is seven centimeters. We're gonna use the formula of, for the volume of a pyramid, volume equals one third capital B times H, and what capital B is referring to is the area of the base. So I'm gonna come over here to this diagram. Let's go ahead and shade in this rectangular base. We're looking for the area of this rectangular base. So that's going to be, uh, length times width, six centimeters times three centimeters is 18 square centimeters for the area of our base. That's our capital B in the formula for the volume. The height is given to us as well, that's seven centimeters. So the volume of this pyramid is one third times 18 times seven. So one third of 18 is the same as saying 18 divided by three, that's gonna be six. So that's six times seven or 42. And what would the units be? Well, units and volume are always cubed, right? So if these are centimeters, we're gonna have cubic centimeters. 42 cubic centimeters is the volume of this pyramid. The volume of a cone is very similar. We can still use the idea that the volume of the cone is one third the area of the base times the height. But you'll see here the volume formula, it doesn't say one third the area of the base times the height. So where are they getting this from? Well, the area of the base, capital B, is the area of the circle of radius r, which we know the area of a circle is given to us as pi r squared. So all they've done is replace the b with what it's equal to, pi r squared. So the volume of a right circular cone, as it's called, is one third pi r squared. Now the surface area, I'm not gonna go into where this formula comes from in much detail, but I will tell you this. The pi r squared is just the area of the base down here. So the rest of this is the area uh, around like the, um, the walls of the cone. Okay, so let's use this information to find the volume of this cone, the volume and surface area. So that's just a matter of plugging into these formulas. I'm just gonna need to know the radius of the base, so that's my R, and I'm gonna need to know the height, perpendicular height of the cone, from the base, the center of the base, up to the tip which is four. So my volume will be one third times pi times three squared times four. So that's going to be, let's see, one third of cancels out one of the factors of three. So we're just gonna have pi times three times four or 12 pi. And what are the units gonna be? Well, volume is always cubic units and we were given linear measurements of meters. So we're gonna have 12 pi cubic meters. This is the exact solution. And then for the surface area, we're going to have pi times 3 times the square root of 3 squared plus the height squared, so 4 squared. All of that is separate. Then we have a plus, and then we have pi times 3 squared out here. All right, so there's a little bit of order of operations that you got to pay attention to here. Remember this square root is acting as a grouping symbol. Inside of that square root, we have addition and we have what's called exponentiation, raising something to a power, an exponent. So you have to do the exponents before the addition. So I'm gonna do this one step at a time. We have pi times three times the square root of three squared, which is three times three or nine, plus four squared, which is four times four is 16. Plus over here, we have pi times three squared again, so that's nine. So that means that the surface area is three pi, doesn't matter the order in which you write that, this way I don't have to write a dot, 
3 pi times the square root of 25 plus 9 pi. Well, the square root of 25 is 5, and 5 times 3 is 15. So that's 15 pi plus 9 pi, which adds up to 24 pi's altogether. And what are the units for area? Square units, that's right. So this is going to be in square meters. And this would be the exact value of the surface area. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video.